Like many of you, recently I received an email from GitHub telling me that I could no longer use a username and password when accessing GitHub via the git command line utility. Instead, they wanted me to use some other authentication mechanism such as a personal access token in order to help secure my account. Now, maybe a little bit of background as far as why this is necessary. Traditionally, if I'm logging in using my username and password for every single uh, git commit or git pull or git sync, uh, then I'm sending that username and password across the wire. That's not necessarily the best place to put it, so they want us to use a token instead that can be easily managed and revoked as necessary. So let's see how we might be able to do that. Now, all of the things that I'm going to be covering here are based off of this web page right here, creating a personal access token that is on the GitHub website. And in fact, when you look down here through here, it actually walks you through pretty well as far as what we're going to do. So the first thing I'm going to start by doing is actually getting my own personal access token. So I've gone ahead in my web browser and I've logged into GitHub and I want to click on my avatar or my face up here. I want to click settings. The settings pop up and I want to scroll down on the left hand side to developer settings. Believe it or not, you're a developer if you're seeing this, you probably are needing some of those settings. Under developer settings, I want to choose personal access tokens. And this is where I would specify the token. Right now I don't have any, so I'm going to click generate new token. It will ask me for a note or a description of what this is going to be doing. I'll just go ahead and I'll just say test. Yeah, test repo access. Uh, just because this is a test environment that I will be deleting as soon as this video is done. It then asks me what scope do I want this token to have? And then we can see that there's a lot of different scopes or a lot of different permissions that we can grant this token. Uh, we can grant permissions to the repository, permissions to the workflows, permissions to packages, the admin of the organization, public keys, repo hooks, users, and on and on. If you're not entirely sure about what these mean, there is a, this link right here, read more about OAuth scopes. And it breaks down a little bit more detail as far as exactly what it is you're doing here. For instance, the repo here says, full access to public and private repositories, reading a write of code, committing statuses, uh, invitations, collaborations, team memberships. For what I normally do, that's pretty much it. In fact, for what I normally do, that's just those two options right there. So I know that the repo section is where I want. I can drive in further. For instance, there's repo status, repo deployment, public repo. I'm just going to go with plain repo. So if I go back to my generating token, I'm just going to say repo. Now you see how it selects everything underneath it. Great. Since I'm not currently concerned about anything else, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to say generate token. And now it gives me a token, a really long string here. And this is essentially my password now. Now you only get to see this once. As soon as I click on the next page, it goes away. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard, open up notepad and paste it in there. Now the great thing about these personal access tokens, well, they can be deleted and then regenerated on a moment's notice. So it doesn't matter that you're seeing this password or this token in the video because it will be gone and changed by the time you see it. Okay, so now that I've got the token copied, now I want to set up Git on my local machine. So here I have a, uh, an Ubuntu 20.04 workstation, uh, and I want to go ahead and set up Git. So a couple of steps here. First, we have to set our username and our password. So git config dash dash global user dot name and uh, git config dash dash global user dot email. And what these do is when we're working with GitHub, it will track all of the changes based on our name and our email so we can easily see, for instance, in a larger organization, 
who made what changes in our environment. If we're unsure what all we have, we can actually do a git config dash L for list, and it will show me all of the settings I have currently. Great. Now that I have my username and, pa and uh, email set up, now I want to uh, pull a repository down to the local machine. So I'm gonna use git clone, and I'm not gonna talk too much about how the git clone works. Uh, if you're not sure, uh, definitely look it up and paste in the URL for the Git repository, and it starts to download it. So now this is where the token starts coming in. It, first off, it asks for a username, and the username is, well, that's my GitHub username. That may be the same as this, or the same as this. It may not. Uh, in this case, it actually is the same username. And then when it asks for the password, it's actually asking for the token which again, I have in my notepad. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that on there. And it's not showing up because it's a password, therefore it's hidden, but I hit enter and it should start downloading packages for me. Great. At this point, I now have my files and my uh, everything has been cloned down to my environment. If I would then want to continue pulling or making uh, changes to the environment, then I just simply do another, like say, git pull or a git push. Again, it oh, change the directories first and then git pull. And again, it asks me for my username and my password, which again is the token, which I still have on my clipboard. And there we go. So far, so great. We're now using a token instead of a password. The tokens can be changed at a moment's notice. So if I ha even have the inkling of somebody having gotten access to my token, I can just regenerate. But I'm also having to type in the token every single time and I don't really wanna do that. So I want to do one more git config uh, command. So git config dash dash global again. And this time credential dot helper cache or cache as some people say it. And what that means is it should cache the next password I give it to the next username and password that I give it so that in the future when you try to do something, it will use that existing username and password or username and token. So now if I do a git pull, it should ask me one last time for my username and my token. And at this point, every single uh, git pull, git add, git commit, git push should all use the cached credentials. And now I don't have to remember that token ever again. All right, so now that I have that token and I'm using it, what happens if I don't like it? Well, I can come back to the personal access tokens and I see, well, there's my, re my token right there. If I click on it, it gives me an option to be able to change what the scope is as well as delete it and simply regenerate. So if I've lost it, if I think somebody else has seen it, then it goes ahead and regenerates, it gives me a new token. I then use that in Git in order to change the token. And it's just that simple. Now, depending on how Git is working on your machine, you may have to undo this git config command up here where you're caching your credentials. For that, it is just simply git config dash dash Excuse me. Get config dash dash global dash dash unset credential dot helper, and that deletes the user uh, the yeah the username and password. And now when you do the get pull, it will then prompt me for the username and password. So you may want to do this if you change your token. You may want to do that in order to clear out the cached password and then rerun this command in order to tell it to remember the next password you type in.